Brothers and sisters in Christ, I've really been enjoying a book that recently came out just about seven days ago, Baptist and the Christian Tradition Towards an Evangelical Baptist Catholicity by Matthew Emerson, Christopher Morgan, and Lucas Stamps. I'm actually going to let you look at the back here and read some of those endorsements. And I wanted to just quickly do a video on this because I didn't want to uh, write up everything that I've been loving about this book. First, let me show you exactly what you're going to be looking at in this book. Now, I'll go ahead and tell you while we're on this page, the second chapter, Baptist Sola Scriptura in the place of the Christian tradition. That is definitely a highlight. And then further on into the book, another chapter is number four, Baptist Classic Christology in the Christian Tradition. That's another highlight. And also, number nine, Baptist, the Lord's Supper in the Christian Tradition. That's another highlight as well. Uh, really, what you're, what you're looking at here is a work that really hasn't been done or hasn't been done as concisely as it is here. And we're talking about maybe 370 pages, 370 pages or so. So a book like this really hadn't been done that is so concise. We're trying to bridge the gap between historical Baptist theology, what we have understood as Baptist and, uh, and affirmed in creeds like the 1689 London Baptist Confession, uh, bridging the gap between that and today's Baptist theology, because we Baptists, we love our autonomy. We love having the local church do what it wants to do and affirm what it wants to affirm, but also, in a way, be ecumenical enough to lock arms with other Baptists, uh, have just enough of a Catholicity about us to have a Southern Baptist Convention and to cooperate uh, financially if nothing else, because there is a staunch Arminians and there's staunch Calvinist. And of course, as you probably have known, there's the conservative resurgence and the, the Southern Baptist Convention, where a lot of the Arminians were uh, ousted. They ended up in the cooperative uh, fellowship. And, you know, the Southern Baptist uh, had a conservative resurgence. But, but exactly how do we stick together theologically and what does that mean moving forward? How do we have autonomy in the local church, but also cooperate in the convention? Uh, and what does that mean for Baptists all over the world? And this is the things that is explored in this book. Now, to that end, about the uh, affirmation of the 1689, and of course, having some Baptist only affirm sola scriptura. If you've ever heard the saying, uh, we have no creed but Christ. Of course, that is put to rest in this chapter. Uh, and, uh, it's rightfully put to rest because that is just silliness. How else are we to affirm each other? And if I go to another country, for example, if I go to Romania and I go to a Baptist church in Romania, I don't really have time to sit down with the pastor and go over theological issue after theological issue after theological issue. What I can do is say, do you affirm the 1689 London Baptist Confession faith? Or do you affirm the Nicene Creed? Do you affirm the Apostles' Creed? Do you affirm the, 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 the Chalcedonian Council? Uh, you know, different kinds of creeds like that are things that help us affirm one another in the faith, lock arms with one another in the faith, without spending months uh, detailing all of our uh, super minute differences. So uh, that's another reason why you want to get this chapter here. This is one of the reasons you want to purchase the book. Honestly, this chapter by Lucas Stamps actually goes deep into that uh, 1689 differences, uh, the 1660. It, it really lays out Baptist historically what we've believed, and then, which is where you get into Michael Haken's treaties on the Lord's Supper and how that has played out in, in Baptist circles. And, of course, how that has differed somewhat theologically. So he lays out 
Okay, so our Presbyterian brothers with the Westminster Confession and then the Baptist brothers, how exactly is the Lord's Supper played out theologically there? And the, the Zwinglian uh, tradition of the Lord's Supper, you know, uh, he and Martin Luther weren't exactly on the same page. So uh, Michael Haken brings out uh, the, the real transcendence, uh, almost the journey, if you will, of the Lord's Supper theologically from, you know, the 16th century on. And it's a, it's a really great, concise chapter. Uh, and again, worth the price of the book, to be honest with you. Jason Dusing's also the contribution of Baptist to the Christian tradition. I heard somebody the other day say that, you know, uh, the Baptist don't really have any room to speak on church history or church authority in general because they were uh, born just in the last 500 years or even less, and depending on who you talk to. Uh, that's just a, a silliness. And Jason Dusing does a great job of laying out how Baptist theology has been around for centuries and how exactly it has influenced the church and again, all throughout, there's footnotes with, with references to additional works. And again, as any good uh, book would have, an, an appendix and also a scripture and subject reference. And of course, I'm a, just a major fan of, of subject and name references. It helps you find what exactly you need commentary on throughout a book. And to be honest with you, this book is although it, although it retails for 34.99 you can find it on sale online and i promise you it'll be worth the price that you pay to explain historically the faith that the baptists have carried all throughout the centuries and it is while a reference tool but it is also a, a biblical tool because understanding theology correctly and understanding it historically is of great value to you as a bearer of Christ's cross. And Baptist and the Christian tradition will help us bridge the gap between Baptist and I recommend it to you highly.